Squad. Today I'm with Abigail. Welcome to History Students Welcome Watching. History Go ahead and take out your map skills your books map and open to number 16. We're going to locate several of these states in the Midwestern part of the United States. Let's take a look at number one. What is state number one? Caden? North Dakota. Yeah, so go ahead and write North Dakota on the line for number one. What is number two, Emily? South Dakota. Yes, go ahead and fill in the blank for number two, South Dakota. What is state number three, Carson? Nebraska. Yes. What is state number four, Una? Kansas. Good. What is state number five, students watching? Madison. Minnesota. Minnesota is correct. What is state number six, Aiden? Iowa. Iowa is correct. What is state number seven, Josh? Missouri. Missouri is correct. What is state number eight? Arthur. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, good. What is state number nine, Jacob? Illinois. Illinois, right. What is number 10, Tyra? Michigan, Michigan is right. What is number 11, Kathleen? Michigan. No. Indiana. Indiana is correct. And what is number 12? Cadence. Ohio. Ohio. Finish writing those last couple of state names. Then take your map skills book and set it to the side. Smile when you remember the answer. What did Noah love to do? Cadence? Read. Good. Why could Noah not read as much as he wanted to? Students watching. And Asa? What did he not have a lot of? He didn't have a lot of books. Right, and there were not a lot of books in colonial times. What do we call a textbook or a reading book for young children? Cadence? You're close. Adriana? A primer. A primer is correct. Let's have our readers come to be ready to read for us. As we take a look at some things that we're going to talk about in history, we're going to take a look at several of the things that Noah Webster was able to write. Read our first one here on the chalkboard for us, Deb. American Dictionary of the, of the English Language. Yes, that was a dictionary that Noah Webster wrote. We're going to find out why he needed to write that. Now, our next word has to do with a goal that Noah Webster wanted. And it was something, it was a reason why he decided that America needed her own textbooks. Read our word for us, Anna. Unity. Yes, he thought with coming up with American books and American textbooks, that would help bring unity to our country. Now, as Noah Webster began to write his dictionary, he changed some things. He put in some new thoughts and new ideas. First of all, he would have new spellings for several of the English words. We're going to find out more about which words he changed the spelling of, so new words. He also had new definitions for several of the words, and he made them practical and apply to America's history. 
He also came up with some new terms and new ideas that America had started with her freedom from England. So let's find out more about those things that he put into his dictionary. Open to page 203, page 203, an American dictionary. Begin reading for us, Jimmy. An American dictionary. In 1807, Mr. Webster began the biggest job of his life, that of writing the American Dictionary. How he tr how, how tried ire. How tired he must have been become of using an English dic dictionary. He was not an Englishman. He was he was an American. Yet there's no dictionary with such American words as Congress, Declaration of Independence, or Senate. There were hundreds of American words that had never been written in a dictionary. Good accuracy, Presley. Noah Webster, English spellings. He, he Several of the things that Noah Webster was able to write. Read our first one here on the chalkboard for us, Dad. American Dictionary of the, of the English Language. Yes, that was a dictionary that Noah Webster wrote. We're going to find out why he needed to write that. Now, our next word has to do with a goal that Noah Webster wanted. And it was something, it was a reason why he decided that America needed her own textbooks. Read our word for us, Anna. Unity. Yes, he thought with coming up with American books and American textbooks that would help bring unity to our country. Now, as Noah Webster began to write his dictionary, he changed some things. He put in some new thoughts and new ideas. First of all, he would have new spellings for several of the English words. We're going to find out more about which words he changed the spelling up, so new words. He also had new definitions for several of the words, and he made them practical and apply to America's history. He also came up with some new terms and new ideas that America had started with her freedom from England. So let's find out more about those things that he put into his dictionary. Open to page 203, page 203, an American dictionary. Begin reading for us, Jimmy. An American dictionary. In 1807, Mr. Webster began the biggest job of his life, that of writing the American dictionary. How he tr how, how tried ire. How tired he must have. In 07, Mr. Webster began the biggest job of his life, that of writing the American Dictionary. How he tr how, how tried ire. How tired he must have been become of using an English dic dictionary. He was not an Englishman. He was he was an American. Yet there's no dictionary with such American words as Congress, Declaration of Independence, or Senate. There were hundreds of American words that had never been written in a dictionary. Good accuracy, Presley. Noah Webster grew tired of many English spellings. He he thought plot pole and play the O U G H says ow. Plow mm -hmm. should be spelled P L O W and out all and honor should be spelled. H O N O R. He made changes like this when he wrote the American Dictionary of English Language. Yes. Continue, Tyra. He wrote the fish definitions for each of these words and many, many more. He studied 20 different languages languages in order to write the best definitions for each word. Nearly 20 years passed before Noah Webster wrote the definition to the last word in his dictionary. 
You can imagine his excitement when he had finished his huge task. Good expression on your last sentence, Yuna. The first printing of the American Dictionary of the English Language contained over 70,000 words. 12,000 of them were new, were new words. Many of these words and definitions have never been written, written in a dictionary. Good accuracy. Rest your books. Give me one of the words that he changed the spelling of, Caden. Corner? Yes, exactly correct. So that's why sometimes you see it written two different ways. Some would be with the old English spelling, and then some would be with the American spelling. He also put in new words like Senate and Congress. Those were new ideas, things that had never been used before in a country and a nation. America was the very first one to have that certain type. Now, there were other nations that had similar types, but America's was unique. And so he put those into the dictionary as well. How many years did it take for him to complete the dictionary, Asa? Carson? 20 years. Yes, over 20 years. That was a very long time. He put in thousands of new words and new definitions as he continued to write. Now, this dictionary would be a book that would change. As new thoughts and new ideas came, new words would need to be added. But we're going to find out there's also another book that has been written, but it will never change. Continue reading for us, Adriana. Was the American Dictionary finished forever? No, Webster realized that the dictionary would always change. More people were studying science. New science words would have to be added. With the passing years, new words would be made. Immigrant, bomber, and jet. All of these plus thousands more have been and will be added with the passing of time. The American Dictionary is never finished. Over 150 years have passed since Noah Webster's death. Many Americans all have almost forgotten the work that Noah Webster did. But, Amer but in many American homes on a bookshelf or in a digital form, there is still a gentle reminder of the hard work of a Christian man who did his best to give Americans their own dictionary. Good smoothness. Anna, stop and think. Stop and think. The dictionary changes every few years as the new words are added to it. Other books may change too. However, there is one book that will all that will stay the same forever and ever. And this is the word of God. It's the one book we can depend upon. And the Bible says The Bible says, Verily, verily I say unto you. So heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one little tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till, till all be fulfilled. But there is one book that will never change. What is that one book, Madison? The Bible. Yes, the Bible, God's Word, is forever settled. It's not going to be changed. All of what God has written and told mankind to know has already been recorded and written down in the Bible. So the Bible will never change. That's different from the dictionary. We're going to continue reading about a modern marvel, how dictionaries have changed over time. Continue reading for us, Morgan. Modern mar Marvels. Can you believe there were dictionaries over 4,000 years ago? Stone tablets were found in the country known today as Syria. Most dictionaries in ancient times were written to tr translate words from one language to another. The first dic dictionary was only English words and definitions, definitions was written in 1604 in England. Later, Samuel Johnson wrote the biggest and most trusted English language dictionary called a Dictionary of the English Language. Noah Webster's Dictionary was the first total American dictionary. Good accuracy, Deb. Read the definition, the word and definition at the top. Unity, unity. The state of being one, oneness. This is the definition of the word unity. 
According to Noah Webster, he wanted to unify Americans and to teach Americans to correct spellings and pronunciations of words. America, America was de developing its own style of spelling and saying words. Webster's Blueback Speller was the most popular American book in its day. Noah Webster was paid only a half cent for each book sold, as he did in the speller. He often used Bible verses to come explain the speller. He often used Bible verses to come explain the meanings of words in in his dictionary. Good expression, Lexi. Now, there are almost more dictionaries than you then can you count. count. They are dictionaries of all types. types. Some dictionaries translate words from one language to another. Sp special kinds of dictionaries Define words for people who study math, science, law, medicine, mm -hmm. and even Long A. Shakespeare. Good. Way to use that phonics. De uh, continue ASAP. We have more words than, ev than ever before. Would you like Gog Google and Superfood have been added in recent times? We no longer need to buy a paper copy of a dictionary. All we have to do is search online for any information about a word. Sp spell check automatically corrects spelling on computers and phones. Even with today's computer computer resources, many Americans still go to Webster's Dictionary when they need help with spelling, be Bible references. Skip the line with spelling words. Start again with Americans still. Americans still go to Webster's Dictionary when they need help with spelling words or finding definitions since most modern dictionaries don't include words of find, finding definition since since most modern dictionaries don't include bible references christian christian still enjoy using his book today spelling bee competitions can thank noah webster for writing the book they use as the original re reference book. Although computers have allowed us to find definitions and spelling much more easily than before, Noah Webster's dictionary will always be a valuable source of information. His book has never stopped being printed. Good accuracy, Rush your book. So you can see it has definitely changed from 4,000 years ago. Noah Webster used over 6,000 Bible references as he wrote his dictionary. If you look up the word create in his Noah Webster's dictionary, you will see that right away the first Bible verse, verse in the Bible, Genesis 1-1, is referenced as God creating the heavens and the earth. The definition for the word love in Mr. Webster's dictionary reminds us that God's love more than any Anything else is the most important and that we should love our neighbors. So those are biblical applications that Mr. Webster included in his dictionary. Turn the page, take out a pencil. Let's look at our comprehension check and write in some answers. Number one, when Noah Webster was a young boy, why couldn't he, he read as much as he would have wanted to, Morgan? Because he had to do chores and um, his um, parents were that working. Right, he had to do a lot of that work by hand. And also, was he able to find a lot of books to read, Carson? No. No, there were not as many books as he would have wanted to read during colonial times. Number two, what three books would you usually find in a colonial school? Give me one of them, Emily. Bible. Good, a Bible. Give me another one. Madison. Caden. 
pen book? No. Adriana? A primer, and then what do we learn to do when we practice the letters in words, Madison? Spelling. Yes, a spelling book. Well done. So we have a Bible, a primer, and a speller would be the books that would be found in a colonial school. What was Noah's father willing to do so that Noah could have a college education? Deb? He told Noah if he wanted to go to school or not. Right, and then what was he willing to sell so that he could go to college? His farm. Yes, he made a sacrifice selling that farm, giving so that his son could go to college and get a college education. Number four, what war was America fighting while Noah was in college? Tyra? It was independence. Yes, America's war for independence. Number five, why did Mr. Webster write the blueback speller? Cadence? So that people could learn how to correct pronunciation and spelling. Good, and specifically for American children. So he wanted an American textbook for American children. Number six, what was the biggest job of Noah Webster's life? What did he spend a majority of his life doing, Caden? Writing an American dictionary. Yes, writing the American dictionary of the English language. We spoke the same language as the country of England, but he wanted to make it American. About how many years did it take Mr. Webster to finish the job, Josh? Jacob? Yuna? It was 20, yes, 20 years. Why did Americans need their own dictionary? Adriana? What was something new that he put into it? Words? Yes, new words, new American words, new American spellings. Number eight, the American spelling book became known as the Blue Back Speller. Why was it called the Blue Back Speller? Arthur? What's it, what was the covering? Blue. Yes, the covering was blue. Because it was blue, it was known as the Blue Back Speller. Finish your last answer, then you may close your book. A lot of that work by hand. And also, was he able to find a lot of books to read, Carson? No, there were not as many books as he would have wanted to read during colonial times. Number two, what three books would you usually find in a colonial school? Give me one of them, Emily. Blue Back Speller. As a boy, Noah loved to read. Noah went to college during the War for Independence, and he worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Which one is first, Arthur? Yes, exactly correct. So that one we could label as number one. Which one would come next, Cadence? That is correct. And which one would come third, Asa? No, Webster wrote a book for American children known as the Blue Bag Spelling. You've got it. And which one would be last, Carson? He worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Yes, excellent job. Now to review just a couple of states from the Midwest, let's have Carly come and Gage come. You can grab a pointer and come up to the chart and identify the state that I call out. So the first two contestants here identify. You may take a pointer and point to the state that I call out. Find the state of Illinois. Yes, the purple one there. Find Minnesota. Oh, close. Yes, Carly found it. Nice job. Students watching, continue to review the known as the blue bag speller. Finish your last answer, then you may close your book, set it to the side. You may rest your pencil. Let's look at a couple of sentences. Read. Noah Webster wrote a book for American children known as the blue bag speller. As a boy, Noah loved to read. Noah went to college during the war for independence, and he worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Which one is first, Arthur? I know a Yes, exactly correct. So that one we could label as number one. Which one would come next, Caden? No one, no one to call to during the war for independence. That is correct. And which one would come third, Asa? No one wrote a book for. American children known as the blue bag spelling. You've got it. And which one would be last, Carson? 
He worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Yes, excellent job. Now, to review just a couple of states from the Midwest, let's have Carly come and Gage come. You can grab a pointer and come up to the chart and identify the state that I call out. So the first two contestants here identify. You may take a pointer and point to the state that I call out. Find the state of Illinois. Yes, the purple one there. Find Minnesota. Oh, close. Yes, Carly found it. Nice job. Students watching, continue to review those states and the terms to remember from the, this lesson and our previous lesson about Noah Webster so that you'll be ready for our next lesson. His son could go to college and get a college education. Number four, what war was America fighting while Noah was in college? Tyra? was independence. Yes, America's War for Independence. Number five, why did Mr. Webster write the Blueback Speller? Cadence? So that people could learn how to correct pronunciation and spelling. Good, and specifically for American children. So he wanted an American textbook for American children. Number six, what was the biggest job of Noah Webster's life? What did he spend a majority of his life doing, Cadence? Writing an American Dictionary. Yes, writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. We spoke the same language as the country of England, but he wanted to make it American. About how many years did it take Mr. Webster to finish the job, Josh? Jacob? Yuna? It was 20, yes, 20 years. Why did Americans need their own dictionary? Adriana? What was something new that he put into it? Words? Yes, new words, new American words, new American spellings. Number eight, the American spelling book became known as the Blue Back Speller. Why was it called the Blue Back Speller? Arthur? What's it, what was the covering? Blue. Yes, the covering was blue. Because it was blue, it was known as the Blue Back Speller. Finish your last answer, then you may close your book, set it to the side, you may rest your pencil. Let's look at a couple of statements here. We're going to put them in order. The sentence is read. Noah Webster wrote a book for American children known as the Blue Back Speller. As a boy, Noah loved to read. Noah went to college during the War for Independence, and he worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Which one is first, Arthur? Boy, Noah Webster Yes, exactly correct. So that one we could label as number one. Which one would come next, Caden? No one to call to during the war for independence. That is correct. And which one would come third, Asa? No one to wrote a book for American children known as the Blue Back Speller. You've got it. And which one would be last, Carson? He worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Yes, excellent job. Now, to review just a couple of states from the Midwest, let's have Carly come and Gage come. You can grab a pointer and come up to the chart and identify the state that I call out. So the first two contestants here identify. You may take a pointer and point to the state that I call out. Find the state of Illinois. Yes, the purple one there. Find Minnesota. Oh, close. Yes, Carly found it. Nice job. Students watching, continue to review those states and the terms to remember from the, this lesson and our previous lesson about Noah Webster so that you'll be ready for our next lesson. Life doing, Caden. Writing an American dictionary. Yes, writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. We spoke the same language as the country of England, but he wanted to make it American. About how many years did it take Mr. Webster to finish the job, Josh? Jacob? Yuna? It was 20, yes, 20 years. Why did Americans need their own dictionary? Adriana? What was something new that he put into it? Words? Yes, 
fact, new words, new American words, new American spellings. Number eight, the American spelling book became known as the blue back speller. Why was it called the blue back speller? Arthur? <laughs> what, the, what was the covering? Blue. Yes, the covering was blue. Because it was blue, it was known as the blue back speller. Finish your last answer, then you may close your book, set it to the side, you may rest your pencil. Let's look at a couple of statements here. We're going to put them in order. The sentence is read. Noah Webster wrote a book for American children known as the Blue Back Speller. As a boy, Noah loved to read. Noah went to college during the War for Independence, and he worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Which one is first, Arthur? Why Noah went to Yes, exactly correct. So that one we could label as number one. Which one would come next, Caden? No one went to college during the war for independence. That is correct. And which one would come third, Asa? No one wrote a book for... American children known as the blue back spelling. You've got it. And which one would be last, Carson? He worked for 20 years writing the American Dictionary of the English Language. Yes, excellent job. Now to review just a couple of states from the Midwest, let's have Carly come and Gage come. You can grab a pointer and come up to the chart. And